Hey everybody, um, let me do a lesson here on, um, it's not really a lesson, it's more of like a summation of uh, the main, the best ways I've found to use uh, swiper picking, which is the combination of sweep picking, economy picking, economizing while, while also adding in a hybrid picking. So it's like just trying to minimize your uh, the effort involved, minimize the energy used while using, you know, just minimizing the the eff the energy necessary to play with your pick and fingers. And fingers is the main point because you know economy picking is probably is how you, the most efficient way to pick. So let's we're trying to find the most efficient way to pick with the fingers thrown in there, thrown into the mix. So with that preamble done, let me uh, let me let me show you like the, the some of the most obvious ways I think just just just, just screaming for this. Like um you know you, you have like uh, the seventh seven you know four note arpeggio so you have like this one d7 so that's not strictly sweepable right because so you have two notes per string right here on the g string so you can't really sweep that but but you know what you can do is you just start off with down up and then do middle finger and then ring finger and then come in with down 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 three down strokes in a row so look at look what happens there you go down up middle ring down up middle ring sorry ring is on the flat seven and then you come down with the down strokes so that way and you, and this helps out in other areas too like let's say you have this let's say you have like a 164 so you have a, the fifth in the bass on like this A minor so you have E in the bass So how are you going to do that? Well, you could just do down up or down down up down down down. down. So you have the, the same even no, number of notes on a string on the on the B string here. There's A and, and C. So what you could do is do is it's like what we did before, which is like um, start off with your hybrid picking. So you go you know down middle finger and then come in with your all your down strokes in a row after that so down middle so that makes it a little easier to play down middle then all the down strokes okay um, and it really helps. So that's like the first one is uh, making s sort of standard arpeggios strictly sweepable. Um, and now um, it also helps with string skipping. Um, you know, let's just do this in. In harmonic minor. This is A harmonic minor. And so the thing is, what you do is you go like this, like, um, see right there is you, if you go middle, down, up, up, down, up, middle, down, up, up, down, up. So that middle, with, combined with three notes per string, if you're the first first note of the three notes per string idea is middle is, is using your hybrid picking middle finger and then you can just go down up on the last two notes down up and that's turned your pick around see middle down up up 
down, up, up. So you got you can line up your upstrokes because your middle finger grabbing the first of that odd number uh, was an effective way to turn the pick around. And so it got you turned around the right direction you need to be going if you're going to descend. So it's like... It helps with... Uh, with uh, pentatonic scales too. You can go like down, I mean, sorry, middle, down, up, up, up. See? Down, up, up. So we, we got all these upstrokes because we uh, used, used our hybrid picking. So it's almost like that uh, Paul Gilbert Sixes. So you can use it for that too. Okay, and now, so we, we have a uh, sweeping is the first thing like regular arpeggio sweeping with uh, four note scales like seventh, seventh chords and then uh, string skipping uh, we're skipping around with the harmonic minor scale and now four note for string scales so like chromatic <laughs> So look at that. So you go down, up, down, up, and then up, middle. And of course, descending, you can just do five notes per string. You can't get much more efficient than that. But see, when you're doing four notes per string, you're going in the wrong direction, you know. And we need to go that way, so and we ended on an upstroke. But think, but think about it. the whole reason why this works. Let me let me say this right. This is really important. I might want to listen to this a few times. Is that when you do an upstroke, the it's really easy to do a hybrid pick with your middle middle finger or even your ring finger. So that's the whole reason why it works so well. Is that upstroke followed by middle finger or ring finger picking is is they just go together they just they, they work i don't know i i hope it's just not a, a a fluke of my uh physiognomy you know my uh finger structure and, and musculature i hope it's not i don't think it is i think everybody will be able to do this um and it's real you know it's just an upstroke followed by hybrid pick notes just go together they're real easy and that's that's what I'm doing here I'm just going like down up down up up middle up middle down up down down and see now you can economy pick the next set, uh, next string jump and then here here you got it again so it's, you, and you can feel it you'll start feeling this when you play this a few times down up down down up down up middle down up down down and so now we started the first note on a downstroke we get back to the to the four string so that's like uh, we, we return to the same picking pattern that we started with you know which is the, the first note on the string with a downstroke so you just repeat down up down up middle down up down 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 up down middle down up down up middle down up down down Okay, and then that just repeats. So you can get the feel of that. And I really like doing that with this uh, chromatic scale because the four notes kind of make you move diagonally. And then you go straight down with the uh, five note per string. Because you happen, it's, this is great how this works. So, so I'll just show you how you get turned around. Middle, down, up, down, down down up down up middle 
down, up, down, down. So we have a down stroke on the first note on the B string. So down, up, down, up, middle, down, up, down, up, down, up, up. So we got turned around, up, up. So we got set up perfectly for a strictly five note per string, odd note, you know, uh, economy pick back down on the descent because we got that first note on the on the high E string, we got that to be a pluck note. So then we were able to go down, up, down, up, down, up, 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 up. So that's really, really fun how that works. You know, that happened to work out like that. So I would start off as high as you can. Yeah. And you can try seven notes per string to get to get you reset all the way back to the top part of the neck. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Anyway, um, and so that also works with other four note per string scales. You can do the same picking pattern with like your diminished scale, like five, seven, eight, ten, and just move it up one fret at a time. Move it up in uh, flat fives. Down, up, down, up, middle, down, up, down, down. And you can also do it with diatonic four note per string, the um, sort of Alan Hallsworth patterns. Because he was the first one I, I ever saw who was brave enough to try four note per string diatonic C major. <laughs> That's really tough. Okay, and um, so, and then there's also this diminished seven pattern that's in, um, it's a uh, four note per string. And also, um, well, this is more strictly uh, hybrid picking, but you can you can uh, you can do octave display scales. So that's just do re mi fa so la ti do. That's just uh, C major, but in uh, every other notes uh, up an octave. Or 
chromatic octave displays. It's really hard to descend. Anyway, so back to the other use of Swybrid picking. Um, three note. Excuse me. It's a really squeaky chair. Sounds like I'm farting. I'm really not. I swear. I'll admit it if I do something like that. It's just the chair. But anyway, uh, so you can do the the Ingbe type arpeggios. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so what we're doing there is instead of just, instead of jerking the pick back around to get going, uh, to change from descending to ascending, we just let our fingers take over and do a banjo roll. So we'll go down, up, 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 and then middle ring, down, up, 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 middle ring. And so you get really easy way to do that. And instead of doing all the top three strings, all these arpeggios, it's it's easier to just move them around on um, uh, on different sets of strings like this. See, we're going doing the same thing. We just instead of starting down here on this B, we're starting down here on this B. Let's try it again. So that's the whole lick from uh, Liar, the interlude. And it really keeps the uh, the flow even. It really keeps the something about the banjo roll combined with sweeping. You you really uh, you stay on on right in the pocket because of it. Uh, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it's I don't know if one compensates for the other or what's going on there. But it really seems to it's easier to keep time rather than just strictly all all pick all pick sweeping. Um, and so then there's another thing, uh, and this is just the same idea for, as the Ingbe idea, but it's the Paul Gilbert uh, solo from Mr. Big's Anything For You. This is off the first Mr. Big album. There's the really killer, um, he plays it with, uh, uh, you know, hammer rods and pull offs and, uh, and string skipping, which is, it's really, um, he he thinks it's rhythmically in the pocket. He's right, uh, but I, I think it's easier just to sweep it and, and use this approach. So you go down, up, 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 up. So four down, uh, up strokes in a row, and then you do middle ring pinky on the ascent. Down. So let's see that again. Down, up, 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 middle ring pinky. Down, up, 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 middle ring pinky. Down, up, 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 up. So yeah, it goes.
So yeah, so and what he's real he's doing here is really cool because he's he's playing over A minor seven. He's playing C major triad, and so by doing that, he's hitting all the cool notes. He d it like focuses on, um, instead of just playing A minor seven over A minor seven. If you play C major triad, all you're hitting you're you're like you're hitting just the cool notes. You're hitting the um, you know the 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 E is which is the third and C major is the fifth was that that's neither here you know that's not cool or bad it's just a, the fifth you know usually you can just pretty much leave it out but the C the C from the root which is the root of C major is the third of A minor seven which is you know third always sounds great usually I mean it always always sounds great and then the G which is the fifth of C major becomes the flat seven, the seven of uh, A minor seven. So that really uh, usually almost always sounds good. So, um, you know, brilliant. And so now, then he goes, so so for B minor seven, he goes to, does the same trick, the whole thing up, up a whole step. really cool because so the bass is moving up the rhythm guitar and the bass are on A and then they go to, to B while the solo descends it, 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 instead of going which would have been lame to have all that uh, ascending uh, parallel motion you know that's always uh, going to sound hokey and uh, contrived and, and uh, bad in general. So he, he, yeah, he, he picks this D major that's right here. And then he plays the G major triad over C. So if you play G major triad, you have G, B, D, right? That's the, the, that's the triad from that and so so the G is oh, on, in C major that's just uh, the fifth you know no big deal but then this is where it gets cool the D is the ninth over C major so it's kind of like in plans implying uh, C major 9 by hitting that D and then, uh, or I mean, it's just like playing this, you know. Um, you're playing G over C. You're playing G over C. So that all, I mean that's a million pop songs right there where you do that that trick you know anyway so there's some good uses of uh, swiper picking of making your life as a guitarist easier let me show you uh, from how I notate some of these things you can see how right here, this is for the Ingve lick. Notice we have the down, down stroke, right? And then I don't write like three individual 
uh, upstrokes. I write it like a big catch-all, like a big one elongated uh, upstroke notation right here. This this symbol is, is like a elongated. So it's telling you it's not three separate upstrokes. It's just one big upstroke. And so then here's your middle finger ring, MR, and then you're back to your downstroke. That's your banjo roll right there. MR down. That's your banjo roll. Um, and then you do you just do it again. It's just, you know, repeats. And then here's the Mr. Big Lick, how I notated that. Uh, you start with a downstroke and then one of the big upstrokes for uh, the economy picked big you know just raking across the strings and then MRP and I do the same with if, I, if I'm uh, like I'll show you on this page like for the first thing I showed you how that how you sweep the uh, four, four note arpeggios so we you know went down up middle ring and then look here's a big for these three downstrokes in a row there's a big elongated downstroke symbol. Normally for one note it's like this, but here for three we I just elongate it so you get the idea. I think that is a good use of notation to really capture the idea. And there's uh, the, um, the string skipping lick, the how we use Swibrid to make that easier. See how the three note per string right here, and then we have a middle finger, and then we have down up, and so well, here I should have used it, but I, I didn't feel right about it because because there was a note in between where string skipping. But I, I think that should be one single V, big big V. And then here's the four note per string uh, pattern, which is like I've said a million times: down up, down up, middle, down up, down down. And so that's the that's the repeating unit there that just keeps going over the course of your four note per string scale. There's that weird diminished seven four note per string lick that I did. It's not that weird. Um, and then that's the octave display stuff. So that's everything. And um, and I hope to be um, get starting a new website featuring this stuff and uh, doing a bo another book. Probably gonna write another book this summer uh, that just um, has a lot of these ideas and a lot more classical examples from Beethoven and. Uh, all these obscure composers that I that I'm into, piano guys and other other great composers that that illustrate these ideas and actually Swibrid, I mean you wouldn't have a chance. Like I knew that Swibrid, I was on something with this Swibrid picking thing when I I was able to play the Paganini's Fifth Caprice, uh, all, at least up to tempo and perpetual motion with Paganini. Uh, I wouldn't have had a chance. I wouldn't have had a chance if it was just sweet picking, just uh, legato, just you. You really have to like throw everything you got at those classical pieces. So, um, so yeah, you got to be able to do it all if you're going to tackle Paganini, and that's just you know two of his, you know, in his massive body of work. So um, that's it for now. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But that's uh, that shows you some of the power of uh, Swibert picking right there. Some good good uses for it. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye.